<laughs> Hi. Um, yes, we've had, I've, I've decided to talk tonight about uh, climate change and how that affects ritual. Um, because what are we doing with our rituals if we um, are celebrating nature, but nature isn't necessarily um, fitting in with, with what the book says it's supposed to do or, you know, the wheel of the year. Um, you know, how, how do we negotiate that? How, how do we make sense of nature-based practice if um, there are big changes happening in nature? And, uh, you know, it's not necessarily what we expect to have happen um you know or like how do how do we address that in our rituals the fact that there are these um unexpected changes happening so <coughs> excuse me yeah um it's not a very happy topic i suppose and and this this week it's been really sad to see that friends uh houses are not i haven't had any friends lose their homes but um close by to their houses, they've lost big um, bushfire areas, have, have destroyed the forest or, or, you know, rebirthed the forest. Um, and yeah, it seems like it's coming up to being a really big fire year. Um, and people are, you know, a bit concerned and rightly so. There's, there's also a lot of friends who are living in drought places um, who are concerned about the ongoing struggles to feed livestock or to um, get the local crops to be uh, growing and, um, you know, and people concerned with the, the river system and, um, you know, how do, how do we address these things? There, there's such pressing uh, situations and when we go into ritual, you know, and, and it feels like maybe things are a bit out of whack at times. Um, you know, in, in your place, wherever you are, um, it might be, you know, completely different to what it is in my place. And I, I even don't really know about my place because I've, I've lived here for about three years. And um, people say, oh, it's so different to how it used to be, but I don't have an experience of what that was like. So um, if you've lived in one place for a while, you might be experiencing those things, but we move around so much um, often. And it can be difficult to know even what those changes are. So, um, yeah, I guess the the main things that would change with that kind of effect of... So, um, just notice a few more people have come in. So, talking about the effects of climate change on how we practice in ritual. Um, so, there's some things that, that might change. Like, we might notice that certain timing of flowering might happen at a different time or or that um, some kinds of fruit don't form. Like I noticed uh, we had a drought year and um, our, our garden here in the mountains has quite a lot of blackberry bushes in it or that the old one did. And, um, and they just didn't fruit. Um, so, because there just wasn't enough water and, and noticing things like that changing. I, I think it's actually really important that we don't just, um, you know, go, oh, well, it's this time of year, we have to celebrate you know, this, that, the other, because that's what's in the book. But I think what's more important is to take time to really look at what is happening around us, you know, with honesty, um, good or bad, you know, there, there could be a lot of difficult things to, to bring in. I don't, I don't think our rituals always need to be a celebration. Um, they can be an acknowledgement. I think that when we um, just simply acknowledge what's going on around us, um, and, and think about how that affects us and what we need to do in response to those things. That in itself is a really um, powerful way of connecting with the season that, um, yeah, it doesn't have to be all happy, happy, happy all the time. Like our, our ritual connection can be about there's something concerning happening and it needs to be addressed and it needs to be understood on a symbolic level that can help us to understand ourselves in relationship to that thing. So, <coughs> so yeah, um, I also think that like the wheel of the year and our understanding of it in our local place is um, a kind of, there's, there's magic in that, in, in that you, if you understand the cycles and you know what to expect and you know, oh, this thing happens because, you know, that temperature means that 
you, you know, there's correlations between different things happening at different times of year, um, maybe different, uh, you know, weather patterns that you might expect or different resources arise and, you know, different things happening through the year. And when you know what those are going to be, there's, there's something um, quite powerful in that. Um, but what if, what if it's changing? Then I think we need to be even more diligent at, at noticing uh, when those things are happening earlier or later, and you know, and keep and keeping records of those patterns. I think is is something important to be doing um, because it can help us in the future to understand where we're going. Um, I think when we look at ritual practices as well, though, like because of changes that might occur, there might be some things that are. Um, always going to be the same no matter what the climate might change um you know the the solar observances like the solstices and the equinoxes will be the same in in our place no matter what happens with the weather um there'll be you know still a movement from light into dark or dark into light or you know equal balance of day and night um and and the longest day the longest night that will still be um a a part of the story of our will of the year no matter what so there's certain parts of of how we look at ritual that will just won't change but then there's other bits that we might have to consider um that they might change that they they might change in their timing like uh yeah like flowering of things um fires and floods and weather events might happen at different times or with more intensity than we expect them to um or yeah, sort of, yeah, the, those unexpected things I think is, is worth, like, keeping those nature diaries still and, and mapping it out so that we can understand what the differences are and what the, the cycles are and, and how that changes uh, through time because, um, yeah, if we, if we notice a small change from now to, to next year, we, we might be predicting a change into the future and that, that can be a powerful thing to do. Um, I think um, what it really comes down to though is, is ritual that, that is about coming into presence and acknowledging what's happening in the world around us um, and then realising that when we are in alignment with that or at least have, have acknowledged that we need to make a response to that um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, that there's there's a peace that comes from that. So you know, recognizing if you're living in an area where there's been a lot of bushfires, unseasonable bushfires, really destructive ones. Um, you know, bring that into your ritual. Make it something that you recognize. Maybe something that you mention when you're um, calling in the north and fire, or um, or maybe spatially to a direction that that's been near you. You could, you could um, recognize that that energy is there um, in, in what you're calling in. And I think that really brings us into presence with that space and, and that energy. And, and you know, just, just thinking, oh, we want people to be safe. We want um, to acknowledge that that fire has brought rebirth to that place, that, that there's going to need to be um, a healing and a regrowth there. Um, that there's, there's been a cleansing, you know, like thinking about it in terms of um, the symbolism for what, um, how we can think about that and how we can acknowledge it. And at times, um, I think it's really important to, um, to grieve it. Um, I've been looking a lot lately at the idea of um, processing grief for uh, environmental loss and um, yeah, it's something that I've been talking a bit about on the Druids for Peace and Justice group, um, which has been interesting because there's a lot of people that are feeling the same way, that um, there's this, there's just so much change happening in the environment um, that it is, you know, it, it's hard, it, it hurts. So um, I've been writing this ritual, the Earth Gorseth ritual. Um, and I've put it in a file if you want to have a look at it. It's in the group in the file section um, and you're welcome to use it if you'd like to. Um, <coughs> and basically it's a ritual that is acknowledging all of these things that are happening in um, you know, our, our environment, our world, and, and offering an opportunity to, for people to process 
our feelings around that of, of grief and sadness and loss and, and a need for hope or a need for acceptance at least. Um, and, and using the Gorset style ritual, which I talked about in another talk if you wanted to know more about that, but it's a, a ritual that's focused on bardic performance. So um, using like the, the power of the bards to help us process things, I suppose. So we'll be asking um, people to share poetry or songs or stories or, or any kind of personal experience about environmental um, loss or change um, and, and yeah, bringing that like really specifically into the ritual. Now, now that's not a, a wheel of the year kind of a ritual. It's a, a sort of one-off um, ritual that I think that we just need to do at this time but as sort of an element of that that could be brought into your seasonal rituals if you felt moved to um, and, and I think that we might need to consider that more um, as you know if if the climate is is changing if there are significant um, differences in in what nature is doing it might be worthwhile considering how that might change our practice and um this, this isn't a, you know, I, I haven't been thinking about this a great deal. It's just something that's on my mind a lot at the moment. And um, I wonder what you guys think about it. So I'd, I'd really love to hear your thoughts on, um, you know, what how, how do we approach change like that when it comes to nature spirituality practices? Um, I have been reading, um, again, oh... I don't know where I've put it, but the Darawal Climate um, and Seasons book by Francis Bodkin. And, and in that, there's a really interesting part that talks about a, a really like a mega cycle. Like she talks about, you know, a yearly cycle. She talks about a daily cycle um, and then a yearly cycle through seasons. But then also a 10, uh, an 11 to 12 year cycle, um, which is sort of different kind you know hot and dry or warm and wet and and um different kinds of seasons in that short like middle sized cycle and then also one that lasts thousands of years so the aboriginal people had been watching these cycles and and their she explains in the book that their um markers are not necessarily working the way that they do in the stories because of climate change and i think that's really interesting that you know like even cross culturally, there's there's this sense of things needing to be readjusted, and um, you know, like our our stories, our our will of the year might not work forever, um, and there there's a need to um, just just notice, you know, just just pay attention to what's happening and see how we can change that and discuss it. I think talking about this is really important. Um, so, I'd, yeah, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on that. Um, and if you'd like to come to the Earth Gorset that I'm going to be running, um, I'm, going to, I'm going to do it in Sydney at some point, but um, because I live in the Blue Mountains, I'll probably do it up here. Um, but I'm going to be over in Adelaide in October. So if you're in Adelaide on the 5th of October, I'm going to be doing the Earth Gorset in the city gardens somewhere. And... Um, <coughs> and you can find I'll put the event in the link in the comments for this talk as well it would be great if you could come along I'm also going to do some workshops and meadows on these same subjects um, so if you'd like to learn more about it I'll, I'll be there on the 6th um, and I'll put a link to that as well so it would be really great to see everybody and, and have a chat about that and, um, and I hope I'll be able to do some more sharing about this idea of the Earth Gorseth um, in the future because it really means a lot to me and I hope that it helps everybody to um, find some emotional healing in what is a fairly difficult time. So yeah, um, I've got about five minutes left. Um, <coughs> let's see what else I had on my list. <coughs> yes, so I think something else that we could do, perhaps, is work on creating rituals that 
I, and I think this actually works for Australia regardless because there are certain things that are very powerful in our wheel of the year um, that don't necessarily always fall at the same time all the time. Like, like we might be having pretty full-on bushfires in the springtime pretty early, um, but even in when they arrive when they should in the summer, it can be somewhere in between November and March. It, it's quite a big, um, you know, season when that can happen. And, and I think creating rituals where we, um, you know, have, have a practice for a certain thing like bushfires or floods or drought or, um, you know, or well, any, anything, so, or oh, cyclones or, um, or snow or things that, that come at unexpected times. I think it's quite nice to have rituals that you can do um, sort of on the spur of the moment um, when they when they arrive. Um, so I think that's something that might be worth exploring. And if anybody has thought about that, like what would you do? What what would you do for a ritual of um, you know to to acknowledge bushfire or to um, acknowledge drought or ask for rain even like what would a rain dance ritual be like or um you know something about recovering from flood or or acknowledging flood uh or you know what will you do with storm magic that kind of thing um i, I think these are quite interesting things especially if if the nature of climate change um in uh you know how it affects the seasons is that it'll bring uncertainty and and uncertainty of timing i think is important um in that uh contemplation of what how we should do it so yes um another thing that i'm also going to be doing that i'm looking forward to is this weekend i'm going up to queensland to do the council of all beings and that sounds really interesting um, and perhaps I, th I think there's always opportunities for us to find crossovers with other disciplines in Druidry. Um, so the Council of All Beings um, is related to the environmental movement and um, some people that work in that. The names that I can remember are John Seed and Joanna Macy and uh, it sounds really interesting in that they basically go I, I think the concept is that we go into the forest or, or into nature and take time to contemplate um, how the land is speaking to us and then um, bring that um, voice of the land into a council type ritual where we embody what it is that we've heard speaking to us and speak the different voices of the land. And I think that's just such a beautiful idea and something that um, could very easily become part of what we practice with Druidry at times. I, I think all kinds of ritual are um, fascinating to try. And I yeah, I'd really love to do that um, in a Druid style as well. So it's going to be really interesting to learn about that. And I'm looking forward to sharing that with a few of you um, who I'm sure are coming along too. Uh, <coughs> and, um, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Yes, so, uh, oh, I had a thought. I was going to do one thing before. No, oh, it's gone. <laughs> Sorry. Um, maybe I'll do it next time if I can think of it. But yeah, that's really all I had to say. So if you've got um, any questions or um, things that you'd like to comment on about this idea and maybe different practices even that you've come across that, that might be beneficial for us to negotiate this um, experience um, that would be really interesting to hear about. So, yeah, thanks for listening. I'll see you. I'll, I'll see you in a while. Actually, I've got uh, quite a few volunteers to do talks for the next few weeks, which is going to be great fun to to watch. So, thanks everybody for um, putting your hand up to do something. It'll be great to have a listen to all the things you're going to talk about, and I will see you after that. Thanks. Bye.